All right, welcome everyone. Can you guys hear me? If you're in the um, the live chat, just please text. <laughs> hey, Kyla, welcome. It's a long time no see. All right, can you guys hear me? Kyla, can you hear my voice? We can hear you, Mike. I know you can hear me. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, how's everyone? So um, I'm here with... Um, Swenly Diego Mertunje, uh, welcome to this Friday's Force Friday. Uh, today we thought we would focus on line. Uh, we're going to talk about line, different kinds of line, what works and what doesn't work with force. Uh, and then we're also going to uh, take a look at some artwork, right? So that'll be exciting. A bunch of you sent in some work. Um, I do want to talk about that really quickly. Um, one thing I don't want to do is try to cram in everyone's artwork last minute. So... Um, I'll try to remind you guys in the future on our social posts, but please try to get in the artwork, let's say 24 hours, I would say prior to the event, okay? Uh, this way we have time to look through it and really pick um, the art that best uh, fits the topic of the week, okay? And we'll get better of, at getting that out to you guys earlier as to what the topic is, so you guys can also pick and choose um, as best as possible. We're all still going through this, uh, this learning curve, of course, with uh, having these live sessions. So thank you for showing up today. Um, like I said, let's talk about line, right? Uh, I'm going to go over here to Photoshop. Let's get back to our full menu system. All right, let's get to a blank. Let's get to a blank slate. Let the game begin. Yeah, let the game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let the game begin. All right, here we go. Oh, I wanted to grab my force brush as well. Um, where did I put you? There you are. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's talk about line. Oh, I gotta shut Let's off. talk about it. Yeah. So why is line important, right? What do you guys think about that? Why is, why is line such an important topic? You know, you know uh, all the, the guys in the chat. Everyone, you guys, I'm talking specifically you guys, but if chat guys have, you know, you guys. Yeah, because want, the yeah. people in the, the chat doesn't know anything. Uh, they, they don't know. <laughs> so we, we, we are going. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, yeah, you, you all guys know I'm a, I'm a line uh, lover, <laughs> to, to call it something, or, or freak. Yeah, the line, uh, line, line lover. Freak. Yeah, right. and... And to me, the line changes everything. So uh, you can watch uh, any drawing, you can see any drawing, and if the line, the line quality of that drawing uh, changes, the whole idea of the drawing changes. It's, it's like you see two different drawings with different lines, uh, actually the same drawing with different lines, and it, there are two different drawings uh, because the, the, the line express so much it's not just uh, a, a little thing you put there to complete a drawing. It's it's, it's a language, you know. Uh, it's like I, I gave always the the example of if you want to speak and you don't know how to order your words or your letters, then you will start saying nonsense. Uh, the same thing happens with a line. If if you write a text with a with a good calligraphy. Uh, the, the word is the same, but it looks different. And the same to me happened with, with a drawing. If you, if you watch the previous episode, uh, you guys uh, will see why I start learning force and what it changes in, in me. Mm -hmm. what, what was the, 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 the most important thing I got from force is actually the line, which mm -hmm. nowadays uh, it's one of my characteristics of, of my drawings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it is it is not a style. It's, it's my line, but it has ideas inside. So that's to me is uh, really important. Actually, is the first thing I might draw on the, uh, or, or write on the on the Photoshop document. It says line equal ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you guys? Anything from uh, Swenly or Matunja? Do you guys have any, I guess, relationship to it? Yeah, of course. I just today I I saw someone that did a study of uh, a couple of Glenn Keane's figure drawings mm -hmm. 
but when you put the two side by side, it's like their line were uh, was all scratchy and stuff. And uh, I was thinking, mm-hmm. okay, you did a good job copying the drawing, but you didn't understand how Glenn was thinking, mm-hmm. you know. And therefore, actually, you, you don't get anything out of that study. It's just a copy, but then you go on and continue drawing the same. So I, when you study other artists' work, actually, you should uh, study how they think, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's what creates the line work actually. Mm-hmm. Yes, and line actually, um, you know, it's not like uh, it's actually like writing. So in writing, what you do, you actually uh, tell the tell your story through words, and what in drawing we do is tell a story through line. So line is uh, a vocabulary, I would say. Okay, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. basically, and uh, it comes and everything. You know, if you have like a good line, you have like. It can convey that okay, the person is having an understanding of what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. So a hairy line would uh, you know, depict something else. A long straight, a long curvy line with confidence could depict something else. Mm, definitely, if you if you still copy the drawing, you you may copy the drawing good, but you cannot steal the idea of the other guy, you know, because he's having different mm-hmm. ideas. And you. Yeah. So, so to go to the. Um, that was great, guys. By the way, really awesome. We got some great notes out of that, and I think it's all it's all really valid. There's a couple of things I wanted to um, respond to. Uh, someone had asked. Oh yeah, Matt had said, you know, is there going to be a Q and A after? No, I would say, Matt, let's just go with the flow. If you have questions, there's four of us here, so you know, if you have any question that shows up, just throw it right in the chat, and we'll tackle it as as we go. Don't feel like you're interrupting or anything. Uh, and then also. Um, where did that one go? Robert was saying, it sounds pretty abstract. Yeah, it's true. It does sound very abstract. Line is communication, right? Communicating what, right? Is it just mood? Is it just gesture? Yeah, so, you know, I think Robert brings up this great point. It's like, it sounds like you guys are talking this abstract, and we are, in a sense, talking in an abstract. And I do think that um, that is where all art, in a sense, begins. It's understanding that we're seeing it, um, things that maybe we don't normally see, right? And what, you know, the, to Robert's question, like, what are you communicating? That's totally up to you. The whole point is to understand that you are communicating and to be aware, like the drawing doesn't like pop up by accident. I think, um, I would say that to be really simple that, you know, line is thinking, right. And it is language. It's all this stuff over here. Right. And what we teach specifically, and we're going to help you guys understand more and more within each live session is the main ideas we are talking about is forced, right? It's like, how are things working in the body um, relative to gravity, right? Like that's one of the, I guess the, you know, the the legs of the table, right? It's one of the main foundations to what we do when we're drawing. Um, it's not to say that other artists draw with different kinds of line and be aware of that. And that means that they're communicating in a different way. Their mind is focused on different things. They're saying very different things than some of us might be saying, you know, and hopefully, you know, why you're here is because you're like, okay, you know, I like what I see in these drawings. I, there's something here that I want to get into my own work. And I think what we want to help you understand is that comes from how we think, right? The reason our drawings look the way they look is not due to style. It's due to thought. Right. I guess you could even argue that maybe thought starts to, de- to define style. So maybe, maybe. Right. But it's all really coming from not a, uh, an intention of saying I want to develop a style. It's coming from I'm trying to I'm thinking about things in a certain way. Here's what I'm thinking about. And that shows up in the drawing itself. I think yeah, Mike, what, sorry. Yeah. What, what I was going with 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 the style thing mm-hmm. is that uh, you can walk, you can see a, a Swanley drawing, uh, your drawing or my drawing or Ritunje, and we have all different styles, but the line, it it has the same idea. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I, what yeah. I mean? It's like the same intention, right? Yeah, intention. That's the word. Yeah. So Josh says, I see some pro artists start with really rough lines and clean it up later. Is the line quality of this? Yeah, that's a great question. Man, some of my favorite artists out there, I see them draw with like really rough lines. And in the cleanup is their confidence, you know. Um, To me, I think think at that point when someone's been doing it a long time, it's probably more habit than anything. Because if they can do a really great cleanup line, they could probably draw that way 
with their blue sketch um, and still get faster to the end result than probably what they're doing. Because if they have the ability of having good hand, you know, hand work, line work, they could probably do it even earlier, you know. Steph Hall says, a bit of weird question. Do you feel like there's a difference between pencil line and a digital line, um, art line, and how does it affect? Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, I, for me personally, I've been drawing in Photoshop since 1996, which is probably longer than some of you may be on this planet. <laughs> and, uh, and I can tell you that I still don't, I don't think I draw as well on my Cintiq as I do on a piece of paper. It's just control. You know, there's always this sort of, I don't know, buffer for me to the digital space from reality. Like nothing against Wacom, but nothing beats a pencil and a piece of paper, you know? Um, yeah, can, can I add a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I think that comparing digital pencil with uh, traditional pencil or real life pencil, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's never gonna be good because it's like saying, do you feel like oils nowadays feels equal uh, as uh, water? No, it doesn't. There, there are two different mediums. It's like you're you're do using digital or you're using a, a pencil and paper. So there, there are two different tools. Uh, each one gave, gave you a different feeling. But uh, it's the same as an oil painting, well, acrylic painting. Uh, they're different. They may get to an artwork or a piece of art, but the, the, the tools are different. So they will never be the same. Yeah. Uh, even if they, they change things and getting similar to look similar, they're not the same. So they never would be. Uh, that, that's my two cents on, on Yeah, on no, that exactly. Part. So I'm going to take one more um one more question here from the chat and so we can move forward with the talk. Um, Wazikiel says, you're talking about languages. Recently I was told I was drawing with brackets and other people did. Is it correct to say I was drawing choppy or not full? And my guess is, because I haven't seen that drawing that you're talking about, my guess is you might have been drawing shapes that look like this. And this, this feels like brackets. And that actually is one of the great killers of force because there's no rhythm in this. You're you're drawing shapes and silhouettes that, um, if you think about the lines and the lines are force here, they're, they're pinching at the bottom of each one of these. So that's probably what was happening. Okay. So let's I move think, on. I think yeah. it was, I think it was uh, drawing with, uh, drawing the templates, you know, but mm -hmm. not really feeling the connectivity. If I remember correctly, I think uh, that was the, the issue. So it wasn't this. Yeah, no. Right. Exactly. Okay. So let's, um, just get to a oh you know what i could just stay out here hold on sorry guys i'm just getting used to how the best ways are to do this i'll just delete that okay <clears throat> so let's talk about the line right so as you guys have probably heard and um very often from me over and over again i always talk about student line and the lines that i typically see st you know artists work with before i really start working with them is something like this right so if we think about line as an idea, right, and we keep this, this going, it's a thought, right? Uh, let's say an idea or a thought. Then you can see that this individual is drawing with lots of little thoughts, right? Each one of these is a little, a little moment in their mind, right? And really, they're just trying to get from here to here, right? Like this might be, I don't know, like a hip or something, right? And it's like little thought, little thought. And typically, that means this artist is like, oh, I got to draw the hip. It's doing this. I see over here, it's doing this. Now it's doing this. And they're kind of slowly measuring their way down to create this curve. And I have to say, because I've been here myself, you know, this is a place of a lot of um, concern, or if I would have put even a stronger word in here, I would say fear, right? Or worry. Do that. <laughs> yeah, like I'm so worried about getting it right, right? I just want to get it right. It's, I'm trying to get the accuracy. And nothing against accuracy. I believe 100% in accuracy. Um, but you don't want to do it in a process of fear, you know? You don't want to be afraid of drawing, right? Like drawing is supposed to be fun. So, so that's why I don't think this is a good idea. Um, so let's call this uh, student one. Student two might do something like this. It's kind of like a bigger version of one when it comes to the strokes, but in, 
in psychology speak, I guess you could say it's the opposite in that this person is probably uh, not concerned, right? I, I kind of label this um, whatever, right? It's like, hey, whatever, it's something like this, right? Whatever, something like this. They're just kind of roughing it out. Uh, so they don't have the same level of fear or concern or commitment to trying to get it right, right? And what I'm proposing, and I've always proposed, um, is just trying to get a line, since we're trying to get from this, from this point to this point, let's call it A to B, you know, I want to come in and I want to feel that out and I want to get the length of that line, you see? So the length of the line matters, first of all, because it represents how long my idea is. Going back to this guy, I don't even know where the ideas are, right? It's like, it's something in here, there's another one maybe over here, there's another one over here. You know, it's, going, it's also like going back and forth on itself, right, the kind of scribbling around. Here, <clears throat> I can see this is very clearly one idea. Um, it's getting me from my beginning to my end, right? So this equals that thought. And at the beginning, when you learn with force, this thought or idea is a force. Right? So we want to keep that in mind. So what's going on here? Let me talk. I, want, I think what's really important to understand here is the physicality of all this. So let's delete this. Select all, delete. Okay. So the physicality that's going on here is that... Here, I'm going to draw a little picture for you guys to make sense of this. Okay, so here's a plane. It's just one of the metaphors I use to help try and describe this idea. Okay, so when plane is flying, it's in motion. And it's going to come down to this landing strip here. All right, so the plane comes down, it's in motion, it lands, and then it takes off. All right, and this is very similar to... I think one of the sort of tricks um, to drawing force is that you may not be aware of if you're just watching someone draw. Especially if you know, we're drawing digitally, you're also not seeing my hand. You're just seeing these like strokes show up on the page. The, the secret here is that we are in motion. Right? And then in here, I'm making contact. And I leave in motion, All right? So if a line is this long from here to here, I may have actually started that line out here and finished it here somewhere to actually make that stroke. My movement began here, right? Here's my start, here's my finish, you see? So to get that stroke, I'm actually starting. Notice you can see my brush uh, shape. I think you guys can, right? I'm not sure if you can, but if you can, you'll see my brush stroke starts back here. Then I come in moving, I press down, I leave moving, and I kind of stop over here when I've after I've left the page, right? Yeah, we, we can see the cursor. So okay. great, 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 great. Yeah. Thank you. So that's what's happening, right? That's a big deal. That's very different than me starting from a stopped position and flaring out. That's also very different from me coming in and stopping, okay? It's the idea of, of movement, right, of motion. And if I draw in motion, then the line will represent motion or what we call force, right? So this motion is force. So in a way, it's this idea of what you do is what you get, right? It's black and white, meaning if I want to start drawing with force, well, then you can't draw lines that look like this. You know, like those lines themselves already do not have force in them, right? Because I'm not moving in a way that is forceful. I'm not drawing lines with a sense of motion. I'm not coming in, allowing the stroke to appear, you know, as I make contact and then I leave in motion. It's my motion that starts creating motion, right? Literally the motion of my arm or my hand is creating a sensibility visually 
right, that our minds understand as this is something of movement because it was drawn with movement. You see, it's that simple, right? Let's see, any questions here real quick? There are many, many questions in the chat. I, I was reading it while, while you were talking just yeah. uh to to get an idea and many of the questions goes to the to the clean drawing and inking mm -hmm. and and zooming in and uh, finishing a drawing right. or using command c right. uh and i think there's there's a difference in 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 cleaning a drawing and in and drawing with with, with an idea mm -hmm. uh there are two different things like yeah, what Mike it was explaining right there is how we use the line when we're drawing, not when we're inking. We can use that when we're inking, but but it's not that what, what we're talking about right here. It's, it's like uh, ideas, right? Yeah. It is a very, you know, it's funny you mentioned the inking thing because it is a very common method to inking, right? And the reason for that is typically because in the past people inked with a brush. And with a mm -hmm. brush, you're, you're almost the brush works well with this kind of line right because if it's a brush it's got this really soft tip and you start at a stop position you know you have this blob right so inking came from almost a sense of drawing with force right with lines of motion if you look at you know inkers in comics let's say from the 50s to like the 70s and 80s before we started getting more digital you'll see a lot of good inking work done this way and yeah i would i would say you know it, it brings some force to those images right yeah more, more about the, the pressure like uh you know uh, giving more or less pressure like the variety of the of the weight of the line uh that is very common to see in in, in inking right like uh al, al herschel uh drawings right right okay so Let's t so this is the line. This is the trick to getting the line. The way to get the line is to draw in motion, right? Um, let's go to another page here. <clears throat> so one of the things that we talk about on the website uh, is soft touch. So what does that mean? That means, you know, it's okay to, you know, now you've learned to draw a force line, right? And you have something that looks like this. Uh, one of the misconceptions I see students bring up is they think I'm supposed to do this in one shot, right? It's almost like the inking idea we just talked about, like, boom, I got to nail it from one shot to one shot. And the answer, you know, this is not true. In fact, I would say it's the exact opposite. Um, great line or getting to this one shot idea comes through practice first of all and i think the more you practice the force lines the better um, and when you're just learning out learning how to draw with force um, if you're drawing from one shot to one shot to one shot you're getting less practice it also doesn't allow you to feel force as much as you possibly could so i you know this is many years ago i came up with this idea called soft touch sometimes i call it ghosting Right, you'll sometimes hear me call it this as well. It just basically means that I'm going to start off with a lighter line. Now, what you can't see because we're seeing Photoshop this way is I'm going to knock my pressure sensitivity down to 30%. All right, now I'm at like 90 or 100 right now. So now I'm at 30. Okay, you can see that. So now, you know, I'm drawing that line over and over again. What, what's the point of that? Well, there's lots of things that come out of this. First of all, if I draw lightly, at least I'm not at full black. Someone had mentioned earlier how they see artists do sketches and then they like do an ink on top. In a way, this is your sketch, but it's a force sketch, right? So it's giving you a chance to like figure things out and to make mistakes. You don't have to be committed as quickly. It kind of takes, I think, the psychological stress off of the drawing, you know? So, um, and the point here is not to be stressed out. You know, so many teachers are like, boom, just get to great line, like perfect line that's inked and all. And that's, that's not the point. We want you to naturally get there through practice, right? Practice is what gets you there, not the stress. Hey, Jane. <laughs> um, so here we are, right? So I'm doing this. Um, I might be wrong, right? Maybe I put this in the wrong place. So I can make adjustments, right? I'll be like, ah, oh, you know, this line is more over here, right? So that's one of the benefits of, of this is I can draw lightly and I can try to get a sense of, you know, is this all working? It gives me a chance to figure out the connections, which is basically applied force, right? That's what's connecting these two. Now, I think personally, one of the most important parts about soft touch is it allows me to feel applied force. So 
if, as I want to feel force go through this curve and push its way out this way, I want to keep pushing into that curve, you see? It gives me a sense of power, right? Not like ego power, but power of the force itself, like how strong this applied force is. Because this whole zone that's inside of here is pushing against that line. So applied force is affecting um, over here the directional force. Say. Just a second, Mike. Yeah, uh, let, let me show you a little. Uh, let me show the, the guys a little thing. Look yeah. what Mike just draw. Look the difference with this. The, 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 can you see the difference with, with that line I just drew and oh, yeah, just, what Mike was just, doing? Just the annotation tool alone, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's going in the same direction, but, but it, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. This doesn't feel the same as that. Now, leave that up for a second. So that's kind of interesting because um, there's artists who I, whose work I really love, and their line might look like that. They might do cleanup with a line that has no change in thickness. Their line is not forceful, but if that line is creating a shape that is a forceful shape, then the shape could still be forceful. It could be a good shape, but they're not expressing force in the line. You need thick to thin and some opacity to get it. And it's almost all stages. I'd say the most force you can really represent is if you have opacity and line thickness on, you know, let's say your digital brush, or if you're drawing by hand, you're automatically getting that. Then you have artists who are drawing thick to thin with an ink line. So they're getting some expression, but they've lost the opacity opportunity, right? There's no soft touch in that basically. Right, and then you have what Diego drew here, which is we have a line that has no pressure or, or opacity change. It's fluid because it's curves and it connects, it shows some rhythm, but it doesn't have the great expression of force within it, right? Um, yeah, the but, guys are saying they're not, they're not seeing the annotation line. That oh, know. yeah, they may not. I'll see you guys in 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah not, they, they, they're going to see it, yeah. No, uh, um, they might not. Yeah, they're going to see it. They might not because it's coming. Yes, yes, yes. They, they, they're going to see it. They might not because it's Zoom and they're looking at Photoshop. Uh -uh. So they may not see it. <clears throat> oh, they're looking at Photoshop. Yep. Not, you guys aren't oh. looking at Zoom. I wonder if we can change that really fast over here. No, I don't want to mess with that, guys, right now. We'll make sure... That work. All, all that Diego is doing here, I, I could do that myself. Um, I'll show you. What Diego is doing is something that looks like... Um, I'm sure people was thinking I was crazy. What, what this guy is talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, he's doing something that looks like this. All right. So it might have some fluidity, but notice there's no change in thick to thin. The line is all the same thickness, right? Like nothing has changed, right? So this is what I was saying. So you might have a line that looks like this. It might be fluid, but there's no opacity change. There's no pressure size change, right? We can create rhythm like this. I could say, well, that's rhythmic, but it's nowhere near as expressive as what I did over here, right? So that's the problem with that. Uh, and then you might have somebody who, um, who inks really well, right? Let's go to this, right? So you might have something looks like, oh, that's weird. Uh, da -da. Let's see, hard round. Oh, here we go. Uh, you might have something like this. That's not working either. Like this. <laughs> like this. Um, Let's try all mic brushes. Exactly. Hold on. I have. I have a easy brush. I know. Where is it? I have a brush down here. Here we go. There's a calligraphy marker, black. There. So here's a brush. Let me get rid of all this noise. Here's a brush that has no opacity. Right. Is it fluid? Sure, it's pretty fluid. Um, it's got fluidity in it. It's got a really nice sense of grace to it. It's got thick to thin in it, but it doesn't have pressure, right? So it loses some sense of expression. I just want you guys to be aware that basically, you know, at stage one, um, you have, let's say, a line, you know, you have line with, um, you know, opacity and size variation, right? So this is the most expressive, you know, and then you're gonna have line with uh, size only, right? Size only. So that's sort of the second best. Um, you know, and then last but not least is there's no, no size or opacity change. 
You see that a lot in TV animation, right? Yeah, because typically line and animation is just used to uh, capture color. Right, it's like a way of blocking out the shape, and that that's fine, you know, like that that can work, and you can get good forceful shape out of that, right? I think I used to have a. This is like an old set of brushes I used to use. Um, I think I had like a a pen in here. Maybe. No people who want to buy all your brushes. Yeah, it's nothing that fancy, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Half the stuff is just me going through existing brushes and relabeling them to what I think they are and how they work. Um, I guess what I could do here is just do this. Mm, by the way, can I add something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so one of the questions that people ask me often is that, um, you know, they were asking about the messiness of the line. <laughs> right. Can you add something? So, like, can you explain it? <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I don't know what you mean, if you mean the messiness by what, um, what we talked no, they about. Were actually, yeah, they were actually thinking that, oh, pro artists always, like, their drawings are so messy and, you know, they were masters, so they, like, people try to draw it intentionally, you know, intentionally, they just put some lines here and there and they're just, like, you know, messing up and then throwing that, throwing the garbage and the hustling and puffing and something like that, so... Well, I'm not, there's, there's a couple of conversations here. One is, um, I think when you're drawing at the beginning, the, the goal of force, by the way, is not to be uh, neat, right? There's an old phrase from the, the uh, like, nine old men, and the idea is to draw, um, you know, draw clear, right, not clean. Yep. And I think that that's really important to that conversation. You know, it's okay to be messy, but you're trying to get to your, you know, this clarity is that you're trying to get to an idea. You see? So someone who's drawing messy, but you can see their intention is showing up. That's really what the goal there is, is they're trying to get to a represent, representation of an idea. Not to worry about trying to make it clean. Unless in the end, you know, you're like, hey, I'm trying to ink or whatever, then sure. But typically if you're just drawing, like this is really the goal, right? Let me get back to my, uh, my force brush here. People Mike, well, why don't we start uh, like watching some some yeah, artist uh, work? I was just gonna say that we're we're like halfway through here, so we should start taking your guys' work. So, so hopefully that answers a lot of your questions, at least as to how the force line is created. Um, you know, try the soft touch approach out if you're working with pencil or if you're working with digitally. Um, you know, you want to try to have brushes that. Um, that uh, have opacity and pressure sensitivity if we're working digitally, right? And that's going to give you the opportunity to ghost or draw soft touch, right? And try to experiment with, I want to get from here to here. I want to get from here to here, right? Last but not least, before we look at the work, um, a very simple, very, very simple trick to trying to get more force in your drawings is draw more with curves. You know, curves are going to represent um, a sense of more rhythm and fluidity than a straight line, right? Not like straight lines aren't important. They are. They definitely hold their space in the world of drawing. But I'd say if you're at the very beginning of trying to get force in your drawing, be aware if you're drawing a lot of angles because chances are you're just sucking the life right out of the drawing, right? You want to try to find those curves. The reason the curves are important, by the way, is because one curve connects to somewhere on the other side of the body and that will start getting you into rhythm and we'll go more into that in future talks i thought today we could really focus on the line the quality of the line and we can talk more about um is it a lot of curves or is it a lot of straights like what's going on in this person's work right okay so let's take a look right so this is dinesh right uh let me create a layer on top of this guy and let's go, let's try going full screen again. <clears throat> All right. So a lot of good stuff going on here, right? Um, abstractly, right? If I know that the tool of force is to try and push curves in there, that's going to give me more drama than the straight line. Um, then I want to try and see if that's working in the body, first of all. The second thing I want to bring up is with straight lines, one thing that's very powerful in being aware of straight lines is angles that they create. Okay, so this is 
this is probably one of the biggest powers of straight lines is understanding angles. And when you're drawing the figure, uh, if you want drama, right, you don't want to draw vertical straight lines or horizontal straight lines. You're looking for the diagonal. Diagonal equals drama or dynamism. Okay, really, really simple trick, right? So when we look at this drawing, it's like, look, look at this diagonal. Look at this diagonal, right? There's a lot of drama going on here because there's all these diagonals going on, right? If we had straightened this whole pose up and made, you know, made this figure look like this, right? See how we just sucked all the drama out of it, right? Because the angles are perfectly vertical and horizontal. So be aware of the abstraction when you're looking at the pose of seeing what those angles are. Now, an angle is great. Um, when it comes to trying to find force in an angle, you want force to move across that angle of the part of the body. So let's say this is the torso, right? Right here. You see right now this torso is in itself on a great angle, but I really want to see the angle of rhythm moving across it. It looks like this artist, um, Dinesh I think it was, right, is trying to get from somewhere over here, but that means we probably have to get over here. Right? And that means I probably want to accentuate this angle, right? which is going to pump up the drama even more. Right? So I want to feel this get over here. And I feel it here, and I don't know if I feel it as much over here. You know? I think that I want to push this in here, I want to push this this way, I want to push the curve out here and understand that there's this strong angle going across the angle of the torso. You know? So that's a one way of you know, getting more drama in it, like this leg. This leg's on an angle, so it's got some drama in it. Um, the angle I want in the leg is to get from here to here. I want to do that with a curved line, right? I want that curved line. Where does that curved line take me? This is why I call it directional force, guys, is because it directs me right to the next place, right? So, oh, okay. There's a diagonal that's created between these two. It's like going from the apex of one to the other. And that creates drama, right? Those diagonals across the body created by forces create more drama in the figure and more rhythm, right? So we would get here and then we would get over to the other side. That looks pretty good, right? That creates a diagonal over that way, right? And you can see how pushing left and right, you know, on this two-dimensional plane, just pushing diagonals into your drawing and being aware of them, and how those diagonals then, in the end, get created by rhythms and forces creates a lot of drama in the body, you see? So you want to get a sense of being able to see the figure at this level of abstraction, right? Um, it's kind of interesting that all this drama is going on here, and then uh, this one arm is like, boom, it's like the little horizontal moment. This is almost perfectly vertical too, right? So you have this, and that's okay. It's not like everything's got to be on a diagonal. But it's interesting to see that moment in there versus all the stuff that, you know, is trying to go on here. Now, depending on which way this artist pushes the curve would really change this as well. That's how powerful curves are. It's like if I'm going to push this way, then we're going to say that the force of this body is really wanting to go that way. Or we can take away from how much force is here and push it in the front, right, and say I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to straighten out this curve a little bit more and I'm going to push all the curve this way. Right, well that would dramatically change the pose. Right now I'm saying most of the force is going that way. It's almost like a, like a percentaging, right? It's like if I put it down the middle and I said here's the angle of this shape of force in the torso and I had 100% at the beginning, right? Like where am I going to push these forces? Uh, you know what, maybe this side combined with these two is going to be like a 30% and I want like 70% this way, right? So that increase is based on how much these turn into straighter lines and how much I push into this curve. A straight line is basically zero, okay? Uh, when it comes to how much applied force is pushing on it, right? The more curved it gets, the more applied force is pushing on it, right? That, that percentaging is like, you know, 15, 20, 25, 50, you know, uh, 80, right? 90, you can see until it's like this. <laughs> Right? It's like, oh my God, that's really pushing out that way. You see? And look at the speed also of that, that final curve you, you just did there. Look how yeah. fast this move is moving. Yeah, like that, comet. yeah, it is like the comet, right? One of the metaphors we use is the comet. So this has so much applied force pushing in it, it feels like it's burning through the atmosphere, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it's super, and you know, in the body, it'd be rare for you to get something that super fast because of the bend is so extreme, but some areas of the body can get pretty close to that, you know? Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. Let's take a look at the next artist. Thank you for submitting your work. Uh, let's see. There is silence in the chat. I don't know what happened. Are you guys there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It's all good. It means they're probably intent in listening. Uh, let's see. Let's create a new layer here. Okay. And whose was this? Uh, Harshit, I guess, right? Um, so here's an example of like, uh, you know, fa what I call phasing, right? So we've got a blue pencil underdrawing and this and some red mixed in there and then black clean up and that's all fine. But you'll notice the line that we were talking about before, it's very monotonous, right? It doesn't have much uh, thick to thin in it. It's, it's being, it's basically like an outline, right? So there's already a missed opportunity to just get more force into the drawing just from a line standpoint, right? Just to have more, more thick to thin in here, right? Would end up helping, right? I should do this with an even thicker brush so you guys really get a sense of, you know, like that, right? So you can see the thick to thin. Maybe I go thin to thick. All right, all of a sudden that starts giving me more expression and movement. Even without the drawing, have a line, the drawing having a lot of movement, the line will help insinuate that there's something going on. Okay, that's how powerful yeah, and the talking, line is. Yeah, talking about angles again. Yes, uh, yeah. If you, if, right. It's like... Super, yeah, it's like a cross almost with with cross arms, but but it's like a T pose with but with cross arms. Yeah, so right, no, there's no drama going on in here, right? The the forceful issue here is there's not a lot of drama, and that's fine. Maybe that's your thing, but be aware that's what's that's what's causing you to not have drama, right? If you wanted to add more drama to this, you know literally just adding more angles in here. It's like an angle for the shoulder and the hips, right? Like everyone's learned this whole idea about contrapposto. You know, that would put more bend into the body like this. Um, you might have this leg be more straight. Maybe this one's bent out, right? I'm just drawing a stick figure here, right? But look at the stick figure it has more drama in it, you see? So the curves really adding. Then I can add curves to these legs and say, maybe this is a front to back, or maybe this is an outside, inside, outside template. Right, and all of a sudden I'm going to have a figure that's got way more, uh, way more drama in them. You see, so it doesn't take much. It just takes awareness, right? Just be aware of, um, you know, and this is okay. You got a little bit of angle going on in the head, right? So this might be like this. Um, that in itself starts creating uh, lots more, like I said, lots more drama, lots more story in the figure. You know, um, yeah. I think yeah, you guys don't see like details don't help you. <laughs> Right. Even if it's close, it yeah, it's so dynamic. It's telling a story. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good to bring up, uh, since we're talking about line and ideas, that good drawing is a thoughtful process. It doesn't happen by accident. You know, like you mentioned, it it, it takes thinking. Like, you have to think, okay, what angles are, are going to make it dramatic? And you have to evaluate your drawing. You know, what can you change? It's, 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 it takes a lot of work and thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it does, admittedly. And it's all the thinking and all the work and all the effort that finally gets you into it finally becoming intuitive, right? I like using the shower as an example, oddly enough, because when you were little, right, you had to like learn how to take a shower or a bath, right? Like your parents had to teach you like, okay, scrub your hair with the shampoo, you know, use the soap for your body. Typically you want to start from the top and work your way down because the water's right going down with gravity. Um, so drawing is similar, you know, you, there's a lot of like awareness and thought um, focus that has to happen before you get to a place where you take a shower. And nowadays, I'm sure most of you, I know for me, I'm not thinking about the shower when I'm in the shower, I'm thinking about everything else or what's in front of me or what's going to be happening today, right? That's like thinking time because I can do that intuitively, right? It's on automatic pilot. And believe it or not, drawing will get there more and more. So you won't focus so much on like, you know, how do I draw this? You think about like, you know, what am I drawing, right? Like, what am I trying to say, right? All of a sudden, the idea of drawing, drawing a line is an idea. All of a sudden, the whole image is an idea, right? And you get to that place because you're not having to focus on all the smaller stuff like the line, right? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, that's great, guys. Uh, okay. This is Hamange. So I brought this one in today because it's animal drawing, of course, and there's some horse drawings. There's some nice stuff going on here. Um, I think my recommendation here would just be, um, I like that they're working. You know, there's a lot of work going on, right? What I mean by that is, you know, you can see them wrapping around. I'm, I'm looking at this drawing here. There's a lot of wrapping around going on. Uh, what's missing in here for me is from the animal drawing book, which is the force shape. But that force shape, to stay on the topic of line, that the shape of a mammal, you know, still needs to come from its line. Right? So the horse is like this. You see? And as I'm, I want to create a box for the back, you can see I'm like A to B. I want this corner. I want the back. I'm using lines to create planes. So there's the clarity of that going on. All right? So... So yeah, I would say to this artist, you know, take a look at the animal drawing book because what's missing in here is the shaping. You're turning the body um, of this horse into three pieces. And I know there's a lot of animal drawing books out there that do that. And there are three pieces. There's the rib cage, there's the abdomen and the pelvis. But if you can understand how to get a shape through all of this, um, that's going to give you um, a connection, a purpose, a functional shape connection across the three then all of a sudden this stuff's going to get tied together better. And it allows your drawings to get, um, your thinking to get bigger. You know, you, the, the goal here, you know, the reason we draw with force is because we want to always understand our subject holistically. It doesn't matter if it's a person. It doesn't matter if it's an animal. It doesn't matter if it's your task list for the day. Like, What's the holistic point to all this? What am I trying to accomplish today? What's the most important thing I have to take care of today, right? You might even theme it. You might be like, I need to clean up my house today. What's the most important thing I have to take care of that's going to feel like I cleaned it up, right? That leads to the idea of cleaning up the house. Here with an animal or a figure, it's like, how does the whole thing work, right? How does this person or animal work relative to physics, right? To balance and gravity and all those things. So... That's what we're doing with the line, right? If we go back to remember this line, we've got all these little ideas. And this is like the antithesis of trying to think big and understand something as a whole, right? And it's tricky. You know, it takes, again, to uh, Swenley's point earlier, this stuff takes practice. And it's, you might be going, for some of you, this is a big shift in thinking, you know, in your mindset as how you may look at all things, right? So thanks for sending this in. I love that you're doing a lot of work. It's awesome. A lot of work on the page. Lots of drawing through. I would say take a look at the animal drawing book so you don't feel like you're chopping up the horse into pieces versus trying to find the full uh, shape design of it, you know? Okay. <clears throat> David Heming, uh, great for not being scared. Yes. I would yeah. yeah, lots of thinking, no fear, just drawing. You know, I, I think psychologically, you know, you're in a good spot, you know, like you're just attacking the page, you're drawing, it's, it's really good, you know? Okay, this is Kyle's. Let's see here. <clears throat> so Kyle, I think I remember you saying you were trying to get to some more like finished work. I can't, it's hard to tell if this is, I guess it's pencil, like a, a thinner line, you know, pencil. My suggestion to you here, very similar, and I didn't do this on purpose, but looking at the horse drawings, um, I would say what you need is more, um, is more soft touch, which means and soft touch, remember, we talked about earlier, gives you the opportunity, opportunity to do more thinking, right? More thinking and more discovery, discovery, uh, which is the same as almost like problem solving. It's not bad. You have some good moments going on here. I like that it feels as though there's a nice bend in her body. So that alone gives us a sense of movement, guys, right? Now we talked about how important a curve is, right? You can see this pose has this direction. Does this line show it? No, the shape of her body does, but the line here, if it was darker, right? So it feels like there's more gravity pushing down on it. If it had a little bit more of the taper in it, right? Meaning it goes from, you know, from thick to thin, right? tapering 
if it had that in it, it would give it more speed and movement, right? All those little things would help give it more expression, right? More expression of the idea. Um, yeah, and you're doing something that's actually really, I think, challenging. That is, you're trying to do this drawing with a tip that is extremely pointed, you know, is extremely sharp, so you get this very needle-like thin line. It's much easier, especially when you're learning force at the beginning, to draw with something that has a wider tip to it, you know, so you get a sense of, you, you have room in that thickness to massage your line, and there's, it's easier to get variation of the thick to thin, you see? So the thinner it is, the tougher it is, you know, like, like drawing with a ballpoint. Can you draw force with a ballpoint? Yes, you can. It's definitely harder to draw force with a ballpoint pen than it is with like a chunk of graphite, okay? Because it's so thin, your sensitivity with your hand control has to be even even better, right? Even more focused. So, so I would say um, to Kyle, I would say do a lot more underdrawing, you know, even in a light blue pencil or whatever, you know, like, and maybe you did and you erased it, I don't know, but I would like get some wrapping in here. I would try to, you know, draw more force in here so I feel like I understand it. You might get turning edges and structure in here. You might do more on the anatomy in here, right? Like there's lots of things that can go on here. Maybe I want to understand the like box of her head uh, in here, right? Just like all the thought you can possibly get from other, you know, times that you've learned uh, force drawing, right? And try to get all that in here and then try to extrapolate from that, try to pull from that what do I need, right? What do I need to finally tell those ideas where I've done all this underdrawing to help support, you know, the fluidity and form and shape of the body, you know? So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, let's see, select all, command delete, and let's go back to, I think I had one more of Kyle's I wanted to show. So again- uh, What, what uh, Kyle can do is actually, you can just write letter G, okay, and on your page and just put a down arrow so you always remember that there's a gravity, you know, affecting the figure. Yeah. Will always... Yeah, you know, for everyone, right? Like you have this, yeah. this is sort of our icon for gravity. This is like this letter G with the arrow, downward arrow to be aware of like how things are working, right? So here, to that point, to Mertunje's point, if you think about weight on this one, man, think about what's going on there and what's going on down here, right? So the stress of the arm, right now, it's got a lot of rhythm in it, but I feel like there's no way this arm would support this body, right? It's actually not straight enough. It's too curvy to hold her up, right? And then here, we would, with the expression of the line, I really want to do something like that, right? Because I want force pushing out of the bottom of her rib cage. Why? Well, because from her rib cage all the way over to here, all of this is also pulling down due to gravity. So this is pushing up against it because of what's going down here on the arm, right? So from the arm up, we're pushing up. And then this is hanging down. So right there, big stress point, right? Lots of force going on there. And you guys have the chance to show that with the line, right? Here we can discuss like uh, the importance of straights. You know, if you go too curvy, okay, you may be rhythmic, but you're not lacking the structures here. So like strongness, basically. Yeah, no, yeah. I was just going to say, not even necessarily structure, but strength, right? Like the stiffness. Yeah, and, yeah, right. yeah the yeah. stiffness here, this probably needed to be something more like this, like shoulder to arm yeah. to hand, mm -hmm. right? Now I feel like, okay, I, I could believe that. I could believe that that arm, you know, and this deltoid is going to hold up the body this way, you know, and all this yep. is like pushing up. You yeah, see? Okay, uh, Command D, let's see, who else we got? We have a couple more, Rid, Ridiman or Rid High Man, <laughs> let's see, uh, F and F. Either one of you guys want to jump on this one and I'll draw what you're saying. Anyone have any thoughts? I'm busy typing in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm reading the questions too. Mitsunji, <laughs> have a go at it. <laughs> uh, you guys can see my annotations. Yeah, they might not see it. So you tell me. I'll draw your annotations, right? So uh -huh. you were doing this. And what else do you want to show here? You draw yeah, it. I'll, I'll redraw it. Mm -hmm. 
I would basically say in order to demand that you know you can connect more. I think mm. you know you're going great with the uh, a little good with the line, but you know just want to connect more because you know you just have to feel like where the force is going. You know, and again the gravity thing would be great if you like to, you know, mm-hmm. bring gravity to these drawings. You can just write a letter G to it, and yeah, basically just connect it. I would say. Yeah, so I tried to take Mutunjay's thought and show you what he's talking about. Um, going back to like clean or rough lines, you can see I'm, this isn't about being clean. This is about me thinking and working. So, you know, it's like it's okay to make this quote unquote mess in here uh, and try to draw the rhythm and fluidity of the body, right? So this goes through the hip and then down the leg, draw the connections, especially when you're just at the beginning, which probably most of you are with just trying to create force and rhythm. It's okay to make a mess of it as long as it's like a thoughtful mess. And the thoughtfulness is around trying to find that rhythm and fluidity, right? Trying to figure out where those forces are in the body. You see, this is typically on the website what we teach first and foremost is what I'm doing right here, right? It's like, okay, now I'm trying to understand what the whole figure is doing, right? Same and don't here. actually just try to close the shapes, first of all. Right. If you're at the beginning. So just like try to connect and make a mess. <laughs> yeah. And no shapes. Yeah. Right yeah, now no to, shape. yeah, to Mertenje's point, you're, you're basically like trying to outline the figure, which is very common. I have to say at the beginning, you know, a lot of people might look at like force drawings and go like, well, why is that missing? You know, like there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Well, that's because force isn't on that path. You know, the path doesn't travel to that place. Right. And you need to go without that for a while to just f- control your focus. Right. It's like, well, I'm trying to push that way and I'm trying to push this way. Right. It's not about this so much right now. It's more about this. Right. Like this is where it's pushing out. This arm is no rhythm. It's actually very straight and it might be really close to straight. But even just putting the subtlest of a curve in here is going to help you get some rhythm. And maybe there was a switch, you know, a nice rhythmic moment here in the wrist. You see? Yeah, Mike, you can add in, uh, in that pose a little bit about uh, balance. Because that policy is falling. Yeah, it would go this way, right? Yeah, so Diego's point is, you know, like, look at where the feet are, right? And once you know what the base is and you draw a straight line up from that, you can see this whole body outside of only this amount of weight, right? So this equals weight. Only this weight is over here on the left side. Everything else is on the right. So there's no way this pose would stand, right? That's a great... um, test of your own work is to look at your drawing, figure out what the base is. You know, it could be even in perspective. You might have a foot here and here. Then you kind of have to figure out, well, this is the base, right? Center of this base is here. And then go up into your figure. And, you know, it takes a little bit more understanding. This is very two-dimensional, but if it was even three-dimensional, you got to get a sense of, does this line work if I ran this pole up from the ground through this pose, right? Is the body standing, right? And strong with an awareness of physics, right? Because it's yeah. easy to like just put some lines on paper, but that's not going to create the illusion of reality that you're after. Yeah. You really need to be aware of gravity, of weight and balance. And again, keep keep checking, you know, evaluate your draw. It's not just draw something and just move to the next thing. Evaluate it and see what you can change to improve it, you know. Yeah, sometimes you just have to make the adjustments to keep uh, adjusting that weight, even left to right and left to right, and make sure it's working, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for submitting this. I think it's a great example of you have some movement going on in here, um, and you, but it's, I would say you need more time on not creating shapes and outlines. Um, I also recommend um, not working with this tool. It's a little bit too sharp and pointed at the beginning. I would say work with something that's more blunt or work more with the side of this tool uh, to just loosen yourself up. The key word I think students get to on their own when they work with me is, uh, is this, which I think is really, really, really important. You don't want to draw with a sense of slavery. You want to draw with a sense of freedom, right? That you, can, you have freedom to move, freedom to flow around the page. Freedom from concern and worry about getting it right or wrong, right? Flow around, get the accuracy over time, make the adjustments with the soft touch approach, and you're going to feel emotionally that this isn't actually a stressful thing. It's actually a lot of, and the other word we get to, right, it's a lot of fun, 
right? And you want to get to that place when you're drawing, you know, we're not here, you know, drawing isn't slavery. <laughs> that's for sure, right? So let's see, I think I have maybe one or two other pieces and then we're going to close up today. Um, let me get back over here. I grabbed one or two at the very end, guys, um, but I don't want to do that anymore, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, this one was there early. I did grab Maddie really late and Esther really late, so we'll try to take a quick look through all of these. Um, but like I said, I think we're going to do like a 24-hour thing because I usually look at this at night, the night before today, and uh, get a sense of which pieces we want to bring into the um, into the session. So these are these are pretty good, right? Um, really strong line, you know, strong line, really confident line, a lot of movement, just a lot of confidence, I'd say, in the line itself. Watch out for it not being tapered. It has a sharp beginning and end here. It's almost like just to create an angle versus a force. So you can see this person, uh, who is this? Sahil was thinking force in the back, arm is blocked out, arm is blocked out, right? Box, box, right? Or angle, angle, but not forceful. And draw through, I would say, the body a little bit more. You're only accepting the surfaces that you're seeing versus the full space of the figure, right? But I love your confidence. It's really good, you know, really, really great. And that, that's important, you know. Um, you just got to be confident. You can't honestly draw forcefully and not have any confidence because you want to start getting into the sense of power and clarity of the line work, right? Okay, Maddie. <clears throat> so here's Maddie's. Um, okay, so a little bit of the scratchy line that we were talking about at the very beginning of today. What's helping you be scratchy <laughs> is that you're drawing with a very sharp little pencil also, right? So try to find something that's thicker or draw more with the side of that graphite or rub that graphite down on the side of the page to a more chiseled tip so, um, so you can get a thicker line out of it. That's going to help just have this be less hairy. And then just be aware of your thinking. You know, your thinking here, um, you know, is a little... Well, it's a little short in some places. You know, like, here's a great trick for you guys when it comes to the line. You want to at least try to get from joint to joint, right? This represents, if, if I were to draw this line here, right? It's like, what does that represent? That is the force of upper leg, right? So this is my idea. I'm going to draw force of upper leg. I'm going to do this. You see, I'm not going to do this. Force of upper leg, force of upper leg, force of upper leg, force of upper leg, force of upper leg. It's not going to take me 10 or 15 lines. I'm going to think force of upper leg. I need that, right? And I think then, okay, where is it going? I start thinking about direction, right? I'm like, ah, it's taking me over here. I connect it, right? Force of the knee. I don't go force of knee, force of knee, force of knee, right? I'm like force of the knee. See, so it, 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 it immediately like correlates, it connects represents exactly what the thinking really is, right? And to that point, I would say the best thing that you can probably work on is connecting. You're only grabbing edges, you know, like just flow around the body, you know, relax and let this stuff flow, right? Flow around, figure out where this stuff goes, you see, right? And just figure this part out. Loosen up. I would say the best thing I could tell you is loosen up, relax, let the line get longer and connected, right? You start with this line, but this line connects to this line. So this is almost in a way like its own little C and another little C. Their connection is an S, you see? And that's not the torso. We also talk about S and C torsos, but the line is really S's and C's, you see? So you're looking for the, the S moments create the rhythms. The C's are like the directional forces, right? So here's like a C curve and a C curve, but my connection creates this S and you want those moments to happen, okay? Um, let's see here. All right, last but not least. So very similar to what we were just talking about, right? Um, let's see, let me get an extra layer on here. There we go. Um, this is Esther's. I really appreciate that you're trying to capture forces here, right? Like you didn't draw this part of the leg. Um, this needs the longer line, like we just talked about with Maddie's. Uh, this is probably a C torso, right? I'm going to go with your intention. Uh, it's like this, all right? 
And then I want to come through and around over the hip, down the front of the thigh like you have. And this, I'm going to go with, again, your intention and say this is front of thigh, back of calf. Right? And I redraw it, by the way. Notice, uh, hopefully you guys are noticing, I keep going like over this stuff, right? I keep like feeling it out. I, help, I keep gluing it together. It's, I'm driving the line, right? I'm driving these rhythms. I'm driving that line. You know, that gets me up into the shoulder and then out the arm, right? And suddenly I have something that starts feeling rhythmic and connected, you see? And it's all starting with today's focus, which was the line itself, right? Yeah, guys. And, and watch that Mike almost trace the drawing. Mm-hmm. It almost trace the drawing and, and, and look, can you move Mike? Uh, that's another layer or you're in the same layer? Nope, I can move it. Um... So check the difference uh, between how, how it feels, just how it feels. No, it's better or, uh, or it's uh, nicer. You, you like it more than Mike or, or the other artist. It's just how it feels. Or how it feels even... one drawing against the other. Yeah, I would say even to dig into that, it's like, if you look at the artist's work and make believe this isn't me, we're just looking at this drawing. It's like, what, what is the, what are the ideas shown in each, each one? What is this person thinking about? What is this person thinking about? Like I said, it's, it's more about like, what are the thoughts, you know, and you can do this with anything. You can go to a museum and go look at a painting or a drawing. What are, you know, how did this person get to this place? It started with nothing. Here we are. I'm looking at this piece of art. Whoa, this person is thinking about these things. This person is thinking about these things, right? Be aware of how dramatic your perception of, not to get grandiose here, but your perception of life is relative to how you draw and how that shows up in your work. You know, are you an impressionistic painter, you know, or are you a photorealist? Like, how do you paint? It's the same thing with the drawing. You know, like, what are you doing with your line? These lines represent clear, um, clearly they represent clearly what you're thinking no matter what you're thinking it's going to show up on the page okay so i'm going to close up here guys um thank you for coming today i hope that this helps you guys on your own personal journeys to drawing force thank you uh diego um swenley and Matunje, um for your feedback today some really great insights um next week i'm not going to say what next week's topic is i'll get that out to you in a couple of days i'll try to keep making that earlier and earlier um, but I would say in between now and then, right, if we really start building up a community here, go and practice the line, right? Remember the line is thinking, the line represents ideas, it's expression of thoughts and emotions. It has force in it, right? That line is force. Try practicing literally just drawing A to B lines and get the curve. Try soft touch or ghosting, right? Like try to get that whole thing to happen. Um, and then I will see you guys next Friday, okay? All right, thank you. you. Yeah, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Bye bye.